Hi, I'm Dr. Felice Gersh, your integrative OBGYN, and I'm speaking to you from Irvine, California. I'd like to introduce myself to those of you who are new to my program. I have a brick and mortar practice called the Integrative Medical Group of Irvine in Irvine, California, where I practice integrative medicine with my women patients. I am unique in that I did a two-year fellowship in integrative medicine at the University of Arizona in their program in integrative medicine, as well as being board certified in OBGYN. And what that means is that I combine evidence-based therapies that expand beyond the conventional of surgery and pharmaceuticals, incorporating a whole array of lifestyle modalities mind-body medicine, and targeted supplements to help every woman at every stage of life to optimize her health. I'm focusing at this time on menopause because I have a new book out called Menopause, 50 Things You Need to Know, which is available on Amazon. I hope that any of you women who are in menopause, approaching menopause, or know someday you'll be in menopause. I guarantee if you're a woman, you will be. Well, I can't guarantee it. Maybe they'll invent a way to give you new ovaries, but the way things are right now, you will deal with menopause at some point. So it's universal, it's natural, but that doesn't mean it's good for us. So I love to talk about some of the different ways that menopause can affect women, and of course, give some options, to ameliorate the issues, the problems associated with these menopausal issues. Today, I would like to talk about menopause and osteoarthritis, inflammation of the joints. Now, I don't know if you know this, but there is an epidemic of joint replacements happening in the United States. In fact, in Irvine, where I am, there's an orthopedic hospital where they line patients up to do hip and knee replacements. And there are other joints, of course, that get involved. And the back as well is involved in osteoarthritis. So it's really prevalent to have problems with joints, and ultimately having joint replacements. Women make up the majority of patients who do undergo joint replacement. That's often not talked about. And it's not that women are having injuries from playing football and soccer. Now, yes, injuries, trauma can create damage to joints and become a predisposing factor for the development of osteoarthritis. But most osteoarthritis that women are experiencing is not from trauma. And guess what? It's not wear and tear. It's about degeneration. So that's why they call it degenerative joint disease. And that's why it has itis in it, osteoarthritis, because it's an inflammatory process. Now, here's some interesting facts. The bone is actually part of the joint. Most people don't think about that, that in order to have a healthy joint, you also need to have healthy bones. And there are many structures in a joint. There are various ligamentous structures, tendons, cartilage, and all of these, every one of them is related to estrogen. Now, after menopause, guess what your ovaries don't make? They don't make estrogen. Estrogen in the form of estradiol, the form that nature creates from our ovaries and has a balanced effect on all the estrogen receptors, alpha, beta, and the membrane receptor throughout every organ system in our body. Remember, estrogen, is not just about reproductive functions and having menstrual cycles. It's about everything. Nature made estrogen to be like the hormonal glue that keeps every organ system working in synchrony and optimally for the purpose of reproductive success and survival so that a woman can raise her children to the age of their sexual maturity so they can reproduce and that a woman can do it multiple times over and over. Now, remember, only humans 
are the species of animal on this planet that intentionally tries to control their reproductive destiny. Every other animal just makes babies. <laughs> they don't say, oh, um, this is a bad year. I think I'll skip it. I think I'll wait and go on vacation or save or go back to school. No, every other animal has instinctive desires, has sex and makes babies. And that's whether we like it or not, what our bodies were designed and evolved to do. And estrogen is about everything in the body and including the joints. So in the joints, what happens with aging, which goes along with menopause? And they go together. That's why so many times people say, it's about aging. Well, a woman who is aging is going to go into menopause. And aging, I see as the growth of deficiencies. And these deficiencies begin with hormonal deficiencies. The dominant estrogen, the dominant hormone that becomes deficient is estrogen. So, well, what does estrogen have to do with a joint anyway? Well, I mentioned bones. Bones are really important to having a healthy joint. For example, if you think about a shoulder, if you think about a hip, if you think about a knee, there's cartilage that covers the end of the bone <clears throat> so that you have this covering. Now, in order for that cartilage covering, often it's called the labrum, for that to hold tight, you need to have a healthy bone. If that bone becomes very porous and weak, then you'll also have a misfit and you may have some separation. So a lot of times when people talk about tearing, it's not tearing per se. Now you can have trauma where you do have a tear or an injury, but I'm talking about just age-related, menopausal-related degenerative joint disease. So you can have this covering, this labrum, start to separate, and that is going to cause fraying, and that is no good for the joint function. In addition, the substances within the joint, other than the bone, the different cartilage, the ligaments, the tendons, they are flexible in a young woman. But with aging and menopause, which is together one in the same, you have joints becoming differently functioning. The ligaments, the tendons, instead of being flexible so that they can bend, they instead become stiffer and they rip and tear with the same level of activity that previously would have done no harm. So often a, a woman will be 55, 60, she goes out to play tennis, have a jog, do something she's always done. She uses her arm to you know, play tennis and so on. And oh my God, there's like a rip, a tear. Something happened in the knee. So it's because you have degeneration of these critical structures. Now, why is it and what's going on? Well, estrogen is key to making proper collagen, hyaluronic acid, elastin. These are critical substances in a joint that keeps, that keeps all these structures soft and flexible so that don't, they don't become stiff, rigid, and tear. You need to have lubrication in the joint, the hyaluronic acid. You need to have the proper collagen and the collagen and protein matrix to keep ligaments and tendons soft and flexible. Elastin that keeps things elastic and moving. They all require adequate amounts of estrogen. So as estrogen levels drop, the joint becomes drier, the, the ingredients, the, the different structures become stiffer, rigid, and healing changes as well. Estrogen is the trigger to growth factors that create healing. So when you have little traumas from running or jumping or doing something, these little traumas don't heal so well in an environment that is estrogen deficient. So these are really big deals. So women are, like I said, more likely to have degenerative joint disease, osteoarthritis, resulting long-term in having joints needing to be replaced because of chronic pain when you have the collagen, but 
the production of collagen requires proper estrogen. And when you lose, when the collagen starts to fray and, and degenerates, and then you have more what we call like bone on bone, that, re, that creates pain, lots of pain. Now, let me talk a little bit, diverge into a very related topic that I see in my practice all the time. Now, it's called frozen shoulder. Interestingly, in Japan, they call it 50-year-old shoulder because it happens predominantly in menopausal women in their 50s. And why is that? Well, first of all, 70% of individuals who develop frozen shoulder, also known as it's encapsulitis of the shoulder. So when you have this problem, 70% are women in their 50s. Now, that's not a chance event. And yet you see all over, like the association not being made between estrogen and frozen shoulder. So what is the association? Well, you have this stiffening of the structures involving the capsule of the shoulder, and you get fibrosis because of inflammation. Inflammation causes fibrosis. And then it actually becomes like frozen. So you, a woman can't lift her arm over her head. That's a pretty big deal. How are you going to do the wave, right? So this is a very common problem under recognized as a menopausal issue due to estrogen deficiency. Now, women who get it, if you give them estrogen that doesn't like fix the problem, that's why you need to have estrogen to be replenished when it's on the downward trend, not when you have none for several years, although you have to take off where you left off. It is what it is. You know, you can't change the past, so we just move forward from wherever you are. But once you have a frozen shoulder, which is not considered an, a, an osteoarthritis event, but it is a similar, we'll call it a related event. It's loss of estrogen causing injury and degeneration of a structure in a joint. And then you have to work with a physical therapist to try to free up the adhesions and then restore movement. So it's really an amazing story that we have frozen shoulders and no one is thinking, well, this is a menopausally induced thing. And, and people in Japan kind of got it. They call it 50-year-old shoulder because it happens in women at menopause. So joints are critical to having a high quality life. Yes, thank goodness we can give people artificial knees and shoulders and hips and all of that. But I want my patients to keep their joints for their whole lives. I want everyone to be able to do the wave, to run, to, to have fun, to dance, to do whatever they want with their joints, to stay mobile, flexible, and functional. So the best way is to have hormone replacement with physiologic, bioidentical, human identical hormones as a woman is transitioning into menopause. But what else can you do as well? Because remember, I've said over and over, right now we can't recreate ovarian function. We're trying, I'm, I'm, I'm putting together with other amazing women, study to look at replacing hormones in a physiologic way to mimic the menstrual cycle. And, and I can't wait to get that going because that's the closest we'll have to replacing our ovarian function, which goes in all of us around age 50. So what else can we do? Well, we want to eat high quality protein. You can take collagen supplements for inflammation or pain because osteoarthritis can be very painful. Curcumin, Boswellia, omega-3 can be quite helpful. So all of that is great. And as I mentioned, you might want to take a collagen supplement. You can take hyaluronic acid. That can sometimes help. And that's, remember, hyaluronic acid is the liquidy stuff in a joint that helps to maintain moisture, keep things from drying out, and stay mobile. In fact, they have a hyaluronic acid product that's injected into knees, 
So, so some people find it helps, some people don't, but they're trying to replace that. Well, estrogen maintains that there, and we just want to maintain our estrogen. And also for osteoarthritis, some people find glucosamine sulfate to be helpful to help maintain the structure of the joint. So our joints are precious to our quality of life and even our longevity, our healthy longevity, because if you are not moving, then you're sedentary. And a sedentary life is an unhealthy life. And if you're in pain every time you move, you're probably not going to move the way you should. So menopause has so many issues associated with it, so many that people are not realizing are truly consequences of menopause. If you're interested in learning more, please buy my book. It's a great reference. It's called Menopause, 50 Things You Need to Know, now available on Amazon. And if you enjoy it, if you find it useful, I would greatly appreciate a review to be posted. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye.